Are you ready to become a fusion master? In this new series, we're going to be creating bite-sized fusion animations packed with power. This is going to help you learn fusion and level up your motion graphics game. And it's going to help me learn too, because I'm trying out some things that I've never done before. In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set up this spinning atomic animation. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to follow along and level up your fusion skills. I'm going to be doing the same and I hope you do it too. If you're interested in the SparkFX Color Labs tool, you got a few more days. If you purchase any SparkFX product, you're going to unlock the uh, Spark Color Labs for free so you can get in and start making some great color combinations. There's more information about the uh, Color Labs and SparkFX in the description of this video. Check it out. Okay, let's dive in. Fusion Masters, this is the first video. I got a lot planned, a lot lined up. We're going to learn Fusion and all get better, better and all get better together. How about that? Um, let's dive in and let's create this atomic spinning fusion animation. I empty timeline, it's time to start making fusion. The first thing we need to do is add a fusion composition to the timeline. All you need to do is click the effects option up here, click effects, find fusion composition and drag it into the timeline and just stretch it out for however long you want your animation to be. You can change this later if you'd like. To get into fusion and start setting up our animation, let's put the playhead over the fusion composition and click the fusion button at the bottom of the screen. All right, uh, we have a blank fusion composition and we're gonna start by adding a background. This is a great way to start. We're gonna take the background node right here. You can hover over any of these to see what they are. It says background and we're gonna drag that into the node area. The output of the background is this little gray square. We're gonna take the output and drag it into the media out. Anything that's going into the media out is gonna be sent to the timeline. Okay, so the first step here is we need to make an ellipse for our spinning rings. And we're gonna use a polygon node to do this. So take the polygon node and drag it into the node area. And with the polygon node selected, hit two. And you see this little dot right there, that means that this node is viewing in the viewer. Now typically with the polygon node, you can click around to draw a path and then close that path up right there. You see that circle, we'll click it and that's gonna close the path. And in the inspector, you can uncheck solid, bring up the border, and then use this position and length for the link to adjust the length and position of the border. And there we have an animated border. We're gonna use the same technique for our um, rings of our atom. Let's get, ready, get rid of this. We're gonna go to the inspector here, top right, and click this icon to reset the, or reset the, the path. Let's right click in the center to create a new shape. And this is gonna create it right in that spot. We're gonna go to polygon one down here in this menu, create. This is kind of a hidden menu, but it's, it helps you out a whole lot. And we're gonna create an ellipse. So we're gonna have Resolve create an ellipse for us. The width, we're gonna say 0.25 and the height is 0.5 and we're gonna hit okay. We have an ellipse created and it's a lot easier than clicking in here and trying to adjust it to get it exactly the way we want. Let's do the same thing. We're gonna go uncheck solid, bring up the border width and bring down the length. And there we have, this is the beginning of our animation. We wanna have this spin. So we want this border to spin around this ellipse. Let's put the position at one Let's go to the very first frame and we're gonna keyframe the position. Let's go over 40 frames and you can use the arrow key to go over to frame 40 or you can click in this bar up here. And we're gonna go set the position to one. So now the position is gonna go from one to zero over 40 frames. For this animation, we want it to continue and we're gonna use the spline editor to do this. So click the spline option up here if you're not seeing it and it's gonna open up this panel down here. And you'll see the polygon right now. If you click here, you'll see where it's gonna show only the selected nodes. And it's gonna show us the properties on the polygon that we can set keyframes on. And we're gonna check position and click this option here to show all. And we're gonna highlight both of these points. Now you see here that this is, you'll see as we move this along this path, it's going from one up here all the way down to zero. And we want this animation to continue. So that's where we get, we're gonna use set relative. I'm gonna click that and it, what set relative does is it takes whatever your animation is and it just continues it. So if something's moving in a direction, it's gonna continue moving. If something's spinning, it's gonna continue spinning. You see, as we zoom out here, it just keeps on going, which is exactly what we want. Select this polygon and hit control C to copy it. Click in the node area and hit control shift V. And this is gonna create an instance. And we're gonna use an instance to kind of extend this line down here, but have it a little bit faded out, have a little bit of opacity there. So let's go, we're gonna put this instance in viewer one. If you don't see viewer one, click this option up here to see two viewers. And this allows you to see two nodes at the same time, which can be really helpful. Kind of position these real quick. Okay, so now when we click on polygon one, if we move the position, it's moving in both, so they're connected. And if we move the length, you see the length is connected. We want the length on this one right here to be a little bit longer and we're gonna fade it out. Because the length is affecting both of these, we need to use the de-instance option. So we're gonna right click on length and say de-instance. So by default, all of these properties are length and de-instance means we unlink the property. We can create the one on the left to have a longer length. 
We're going to do that one more time. We're going to click on this first polygon, Control C to copy it. Click in the node area, Control Shift V. We're going to de-instance the length. It's not attached anymore, and we're going to make this a lot longer. Let's put it in the viewer, and we'll make it go almost all the way around. So we have, uh, we're going to go back to one viewer. I'm going to fade each of these out so that we kind of have that same effect. Let's take the output of this first instance and try to put it on top of this output. Now, generally this would create a merge node, but this time it doesn't. And that's because this is a masks and masks always default to try to go into the blue mask input. And we don't want this to be a mask. So let's just click background one. And then we're going to click this option to create a merge node. And that's going to put a merge node in between the two connected nodes. We're going to do it again with merge one selected. We're going to hit uh, clear another merge node and then a third merge node. I'm going to take the output of each of these and put them into the merge nodes. You make sure you put it on top of that green arrow. All right, looking good. And click media out and hit two so that we can see it. And we're going to go to the first merge and we're going to bring down, bring down the blend. And you can see that we're kind of lightening it up. Second merge, we're going to bring down the blend again, a little bit lighter. And you'll see that we go to the third merge and it's not really working because it's not connected properly. So you see it's, we, we still have that we have this blue line here. We want it to be going to the green input. So let's take disconnect that. We'll take the output of polygon one and put it into the green input. And there we go. So now we have our lines set up. All right, so now we just want to add a little circle to the beginning of the line. So let's move this background over and we're going to merge a circle in right here. Let's take this ellipse node and bring it in. Select background one and click the merge node. And now we can merge it in, connecting up to the other green input. Let's click ellipse one, and you can kind of grab this border and drag it in and make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so now we need to attach this circle right to the end of there so it's kind of leading and following along with our path. It's just a simple two-step process to get this attached. All we need to do is click the ellipse, and we're going to right-click on center. And this is kind of a hidden thing, but once you know it, um, it's really powerful. And you're going to say path. And what that means is we're going to animate the position of this little dot using a path. We already have a path created with a polygon one, so let's connect them up. We're going to go to modifiers, and it's not really obvious here, but it's in this menu here where it says right click for shape animation. So if you want to animate along that path, we right click, say connect to polygon one, and then we're going to say polygon. And you'll see that that jumped right over there to that path. So the circle has been connected to the path. That's the first step. The second step is to get it to animate along that path with the arrow. And that's what this displacement is for. Click this red um, keyframe to uncheck it. And now we can move the circle and it's using this displacement to go along the path. All right, to get the uh, displacement here to match the path uh, movement on the ellipse, we just click on the polygon one and you'll see that we'll hover over the position. And if you look in the lower left of the screen, you'll see polygon one dot right position. So all we need to do is set the displacement to equal this value. We're gonna use an expression to do this. So let's click on the ellipse. Make sure you select modifiers, right click on displacement and choose expression. And all we need to do is type in polygon one dot right position. So that connects the dot to the path and has the displacement match the right position of our ellipse. Okay, we got one ring done and now we're gonna use the duplicate node to make three more and we'll be really close to being finished. Let's take the background node and we want this to be transparent so that we can see through. So click the background node, we don't want it to be black and we're gonna take this alpha and bring it all the way down. Now click Merge 3, hit Control Space and search for Duplicate, and hit Enter. We just need three copies. So for copies, we're going to set it to 3, and we're going to take the angle, and it's going to take each of the copies and spin it around. Click Media Out and hit 2 so we can see it. And let's just spin these around until we get what we're going for. Let's uh, probably right in here. It looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at the animation. A um, couple more things. We're going to add a little circle in the center. To do that, we're going to take this um, ellipse node, put it in the output here. Outside of duplicate, we're going to hit uh, another merge node, and we're going to take the output of the ellipse and put it right on that green foreground input, and that's going to create a circle for the center. Bring it down a little bit, and with the ellipse 2 selected, we're going to bring up the soft edge, kind of fade it out just a little bit. Now we're going to colorize it. So we want this to be, uh, let's make it a blue. So we're going to take the background node and put that in the node area here. We're going to use this as a mask on our background node. So if we put the background node in viewer 2, um, we're going to set the color. Let's make it kind of a blue, light, like a lighter blue there. And we're going to put Merge 5 in Viewer 1 and click this option to see both of them. So what the mask means is that only parts that are visible here are going to show up in the blue. So let's just take this Merge 5 and put it into this blue mask input and the magic is done. Only the parts where we can see things here are going to show up on that background. And we'll take the background and put it to the media out. But we want all of this thing, all of this here on a black background. So let's uh, kind of take, take our nodes here. And we want this entire animation right here on top of a black background. So we're going to take a black background here. 
Let's take the output and drag it right on top of this output, and it's going to create a merge node for us. So that it's merging our shape on top of the black background. And take the output of the merge six and put it into the media out. So we need to spin this thing. We're going to use a transform node to do that. With black background two selected, the blue background, hit the transform node icon. So let's go to the first frame, set the angle to zero, keyframe it. We'll go over like maybe 120 frames or so, roughly, and let's just adjust the angle. It's going to have it's, we're going to have it spin, and we want the uh, we want the spinning to continue. So we're going to go to the spline editor, make sure that the transform one is selected. You can see angle there. Click this to show all the keyframes. We're going to highlight both and use our friend set relative to have the uh, spinning just continue. All right, a couple more effects and we will be done. With the transform selected, hit control space and search for glow. And we're going to have our animation glow a little bit. Make, make these lines a little bit thinner. You can kind of play with this if you want. Um, because all these polygons are connected, you change one, it's going to change everything. Last thing we might want to do is go to this background. This is the blue background. And we can actually turn this into a gradient to create a really interesting effect. We're going to go click select gradient. And you'll see it's going from black to white. And let's just change this. We're going to click the uh, this little arrow here where it's black. And let's make this a blue. And click the other one over here and make this, uh, let's make it a red. And there we go. We kind of have a spinning atom animation. It's done with just a couple shapes, duplicate node. And it's a really cool effect. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment below and let me know what you think. Um, if you have any ideas or things that you'd like to learn, let me know and I will add those to my list so we can all learn Fusion and get better at making some graphics and creating really awesome things. If you want to follow along and level up your Fusion skills, remember to like this video, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.